Hey NFL fans, for any Chicago Bears fans out there, we have a Bears only YouTube channel. The link is right there, youtube.com slash bears now for Chicago Bears coverage all year long, including this Bears video of the week. Welcome to Chicago Bears Now. I am Harrison Graham, back with another video for you guys. Doing a mailbag today, so thanks to everybody for using hashtag Bears to submit their questions on our last video. Continue to do so, because we will do another mailbag very, very soon. Let's start with Luke Alvarez, who has a question about quarterbacks. What do you think our future is when it comes to the quarterback position? Where can we look to get a long-term quarterback? Obviously, uh, QB has been a very popular discussion among Bears fans, among, among the Chicago Bears for several months now. For this season, it's pretty simple. It's Nick Foles, Mitch Trubisky. They're going to duke it out. I think Foles will be the starter. Uh, Tyler Bray is on the roster as well, but he'll he you know he's just a third string quarterback. I was a bit surprised Chicago didn't draft someone on day three of the draft or pick up uh, a UDFA late in the process. Maybe they still will, but uh, I do think for this year it will be a combination of Nick Foles and Trubisky, and I'm guessing that Foles will be the quarterback this year. Chicago doesn't have a long term answer at quarterback unless Mitchell Trubisky falls out this year out of nowhere and takes a massive step forward. Is it possible? Well, yes. Is it likely? Probably not. So if you're looking for the future, someone who could take the reins for the foreseeable future, let's look to the draft next year. Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, it's going to be hard to get one of those guys because they are projected to be top five picks. Jamie Newman, the Wake Forest transfer, who's now at Georgia. Uh, he's, you know, kind of a project still. I think he's a fringe first round prospect at this point. We'll see how he plays this year. Brock Purdy, who I like. Tanner Morgan, who I like. They're both juniors as well. They could go back for uh, their 2021 senior season, so we'll see if they come out. But that's kind of my top five very early in the process. Obviously, we just had the draft this year, but Lawrence and Fields are proven commodities. They will be franchise quarterbacks. So, hey, if the Bears are terrible this year and get a top five pick, maybe they can draft one of those guys. But who do you guys think will be the Bears quarterback in 2021? Luke Alvarez wants to know what the long-term answer is, so I'll ask you guys who will be the quarterback after this season, this year again. It's going to be Foles or Trubisky, but who do you guys think it'll be in 2021? Go ahead and type your answers down in the comments section. Very curious to see what you guys think, because for me, I have no idea. What I do know is that only – only like 17% of you guys have notifications turned on. And the advantage of having noties on means that you'll never miss a video. They'll send you a notification straight to your phone as soon as we post a video, as soon as we go live, anything like that. A lot of people tell me like, hey, I'm subscribed. How come I missed that last video? Well, you got to turn on notifications as well. You see that bell on screen? It's right next to the subscribe button. And hey, if you can't find it, Message me on Twitter, at HGramNFL. Just give me a quick follow. Send me a DM or just tweet at me. I will walk you through the process. It's not the easiest thing, but it's usually right next to that subscribe button. I know desktop versus mobile can be different. So go ahead and DM me if you can't figure it out. But turn on notifications so you never, ever miss a video here on Bears Now. Next question from Arnav Middle. Do you think the Bears can trade Buster Screen? They can, but... I don't really think they're going to get much for him, uh, Arnav, if they if they decide to do so. I think he's going to be the starting nickel this year. He He's not great. He wasn't that good last year, but he's serviceable. He's cheap, and he's not going to fetch you much in a trade. Average nickel corners get you a day three pick at best. Sixth round pick? I mean, if you want a sixth round pick for Buster Screen, go ahead, but that's not going to help your nickel problem this year. I think you put him at nickel and he gives you the best chance to succeed there. Sure, guys like Duke Shelley have shown some promise. Maybe uh, the Bears view Jalen Johnson more of a nickel, but I think he's going to be your second outside corner. I like this quarterback depth chart after the the acquisition or the draft of Johnson. I think there's good uh, depth there with Tolliver and Artie Burns and Denmark and Shelley and the Roberson, the CFL kid. I like what the Bears have done at this position. Sure, a screen is not the long-term answer at nickel, but I think through 20 20- twenty, He is more than serviceable there. I think he'll be just fine. He's overachieved being a late-round pick out of a UT chat a few years ago. I think you're okay with him at nickel. If you were to trade him, 
like I said, you might get a sixth or a seventh round pick for him. I don't really know if that's worth it. I'd rather play him considering he's projected to be a starter. Next question from John Gihon here. Uh, let me know if I'm pronouncing that right, John. How do the Bears address the safety position? There is an obvious need for a box safety next to Eddie Jackson, and the Bears didn't draft one. Look, going into the draft, I had a strong safety. Uh, the safety in general is my third biggest need, and they didn't draft one. Bottom line is, John, uh, things happen in the draft. You can't control how it's going to fall. Uh, they obviously felt like there wasn't a strong safety on the board that they were comfortable with each time they picked, so they went in different directions. You got Deion Bush there. They picked up Jordan Lucas from the Chiefs in the offseason. I think they can get by if they need to. I'm with you, though. I would like to see Chicago upgrade at the strong safety position. The good news is, is there's still some options out there. All these guys are still free agents. Eric Reed, Tony Jefferson, Rashad Jones, Morgan Burnett, and Tavon Wilson, uh, they are free agents. They play with the Panthers, Ravens, Dolphins, Browns, and the Lions this past year. I'm ordering it from Reed to Wilson in terms of best available. I think Reed and Jefferson are the two guys I would look at. Jefferson coming off an injury-riddled season, so I think you could actually get him for pretty cheap. I like his locker room presence. Both these guys have been leaders in the past. I like Eric Reed a lot. Very productive. 130 tackles last year. He played all 16 games for the Carolina Panthers. Chicago can get an option at strong safety and not spend that much money. I think these guys are going to be in the 4 or $5 million range per year, so you could get them both on a cheap one-year deal. I think that's an option for the Bears. They still have a little money to work with, so it would not surprise me if they did that. But keep in mind, they probably still want to add an offensive lineman in free agency as well. Pick a strong safety. If you could pick one, go ahead and let me know between these two. Type R for Eric Reed. Type J for Tony Jefferson. For me, it's probably whoever's cheaper, right? Like, I like them both. Reed's probably the safer option. He wasn't injured a bunch last year, but... I would love Tony Jefferson as well. Whoever's cheaper, sign me up for that. Also, you guys should sign up for this. It's not really signing up, but you should purchase a new Bears jersey, chatsports.com slash Bears1. Cole Komet hasn't officially chosen his number yet, but when he does, you can already have this pre-ordered, and they will send it to you immediately. So go to chatsports.com slash Bears1. You can get current players as well, Trubisky. Uh, you can get Cleo Mack, uh, Allen Robinson, a bunch of other guys, Tariq Cohen. When you go to that link, it's chatsports.com slash Bears1. It'll be in the comments. It'll be in the description. Just click on it. Boom. Get you to our partner, Fanatics. All right, Jake2006 wants to know, should Chicago have drafted Grant Delpit at pick number 43, kind of building on that safety discussion? I don't think so, Jake, and here's why. I, we, he's not a strong safety. Really struggled tackling last year. Uh, Eddie Jackson's going to be your center, center fielder, and that's what Grant Delpit does. He's not good in the box. He doesn't tackle well. He takes bad angles uh, when he's trying to make tackles. Look, he's a good player. I just don't think he's a fit with the Bears because he's a guy that you want, uh, you know, dropping deep into coverage and making plays on the football. You don't want him tackling 230-pound running backs because he will struggle in that area. Grant Delpit did not play that well in 2019 for the LSU Tigers. So I don't think that passing on Delpit was a bad option for the Chicago Bears. I think that was honestly a good move to not take him because he is not a box safety. The Bears need a box safety, a good tackler, and that is not Grant Delpit's game. But I'll leave it to you guys. Was passing on Delpit a mistake? Type Y for yes, type N for no. Go ahead and let me know down in the comments section. I don't think it was. I think he's a bad fit for the Bears. They already have a free safety. A team that was going to take him has to play him at free safety, in my opinion. And that was not going to be the Chicago Bears. Let's go to Paul Gross, loyal watcher. Appreciate it, Paul. What is your most logical reason Pace didn't draft an offensive lineman in the second round? And do you think Castillo can get it done with the guys we have? Hashtag Bears. I think Castillo will help, but I think the logical reason, it's very simple, is Cole Komet was the highest player on their board when they drafted at 43, so they took him. I'm not going to fault him for that. Tight end was a position of need as well. Not as big of offensive linemen, but they went with the player that they felt comfortable with. Obviously, they didn't like any of the offensive linemen. Seven offensive linemen had already been taken when both these picks were made, so keep that in mind. Jalen Johnson at pick 50, he was one of my top players on the board. They needed a number two corner. I think that's what they've got here in Jalen Johnson. You can't predict the draft. If Cesar Ruiz, Ruiz fell to uh, Cesar Ruiz fell to pick number 43, they probably would have drafted him. But the Saints took him in the first round, so that is the way that went. Matt Hennessy wasn't high enough on their board. He fell into the third round. So 
I think they were just comfortable with the players they selected at the time. Didn't like the offensive lineman there. Took a couple of projects in round seven at offensive line. We'll see if Hambright or any of those guys can pan out. But in the end, I just think they followed their board and they didn't have an offensive lineman there at pick number 43 or pick number 50. Between Komet and Johnson, which pick did you like better? Type CK for Komet, type JJ for Jalen Johnson. I like the Johnson pick a little more. I think he'll have more impact as a rookie uh, because I think he'll be the number two corner for the Chicago Bears. But long term, might end up being Komet because there is not a long term tight end on this roster before they drafted him. All right, guys, I want you to get subscribed to Chicago Bears now. If you haven't watched our Bears draft grades, I'll dive deeper into Komet and Johnson and the rest of the draft class. Go check that out on the channel. Uh, uploaded it just like 20 minutes after the 2020 NFL draft ended. Also, a reminder, turn on notifications so you never, ever miss a video. Some of you guys are probably like, oh, you posted a Bears draft grades video. Yeah, you probably missed it because you didn't have notifications turned on. So go ahead and subscribe. Turn on notifications. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Carter Miller asks, what do you think about Javon Wims being the wide receiver number two with Anthony Miller in the slot? The Bears have expressed big confidence, and he is a big target similar to Allen Robinson. It's possible. Uh, it's possible. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, Anthony Miller will play the slot. I just – the way I do my depth charts is wide receiver one, two, and three. Miller is the second best receiver, but he will play slot primarily for the Bears. I have Cordero Patterson there at wide receiver three. He's kind of a Swiss Army player, as you guys know. They move him around. He plays some running back, does some different stuff. Wims Ridley, I think some of those pieces uh, will uh, compete for wide receiver play as well, as will Darnell Mooney. So I don't think that is out of the question that uh, a Javon Wims could get significant playing time and even earn a starting position. Uh, I think that uh, Patterson will get the first opportunity, but I think Wims will be in the mix. I think Ridley will be in the mix. I think Darnell Mooney, the rookie out of Tulane, will be in the mix as well. He's got really, really good speed. So I think there could be a heavier rotation at the second outside receiver. Miller will play some outside, but I do agree with you, Carter. I think we'll primarily play in the slot. I'm fascinated to see how it plays out for the Chicago Bears. This one from Keenan Queen. Uh, we need to get Freeman. Wasn't really a question, but I wanted to address this. Devontae Freeman is, I assume, who he's talking about here. Totally disagree, Keenan. Uh, he's been banged up a lot the past few years. Hasn't had a 1,000-yard season since 2016. I don't really think he's worth bringing on board. He's slow now. He's not nearly as productive as he was in the past. Uh, you you know, you kind of look at his past four seasons. He's just not the same guy. Obviously, in 2018, had a multitude of injuries, only played in two games. But the yards per carry are well below four now. He's not as dynamic in the passing game. Uh, I'll leave it up to you. You see the question on screen, should they sign Freeman? Type one for yes, type two for no. I think the answer is very clearly no, because I think he's just a extremely poor man's David Montgomery at this point. In his prime is basically what Montgomery is now. Good receiving back, good physical runner, breaks tackles. That's what Freeman did when he was in his prime with the Falcons. You have Cohen as well as your receiving back. Nall is kind of your uh, running back fullback hybrid there. And they just signed Artavis Pierce, an undrafted free agent out of Oregon State, who I actually really, really like. I don't think Freeman brings anything to the table that the Bears don't already have. I mean, look, if they want to try him out, that's fine. But David Montgomery is this team's starting running back, and that should be the case moving forward. 